Yeah. Hey, how are you, man? Good to see you. It's good to see you, too. It's been a long time. We're so back. They brought us out here. We're back. Wait, wait, what else is playing tonight? Slammy. Daniel Kahn. Love Daniel Kahn. Oh, that's the guy. Paul Verdi. Normal men, you could say. Go and play golf, or go hunting, or go to Las Vegas. Uh, we come to the Crack Out Jewish Music Festival. Yeah. Magic, dude. Absolutely. Festival is very energising. It's very, uh, uh, it's great for, I mean, on a very practical level for us to be together. Dave's in San Francisco, Josh is in LA, I live in New York, so just for us to be together, but to be together in not all, any old place, but in a place that's so magical, uh, much of the great work that we do is planned here in Krakow, and so it's really a source of, uh, of kind of creativity and inspiration. The thing that struck me the most when I first came here was not the Jewish quality of it. It was the fact that this was the very first time in my life that I was at something that was expressly Jewish in content that was, for the most part, not for Jews. It's a collaboration, that it's a point of peaceful contact between peoples where historically the relationship is extremely complicated and full of conflict and there's a lot of trauma. It's uh, particularly uh, impressive to see it here in Kazimish because you have the buildings. You have the whole quarter, which used to be a Jewish quarter there. Not destroyed, like in Warsaw, but no people. I think the festival is, is a very interesting and very important event. I'm uh, impressed with the great interest that Poland the people in Krakow take with the Jewish past, the Jewish history. And I think the festival is an expression of, of that interest. And I'm impressed by the many people who come here to the festival. So it's a good thing. Let's say for the sake of argument that things stayed the same way they are, where there's a very small Jewish population here, like, the, like there is, but that there was no Jewish culture festival. Well, what's, what's that saying to people? You're not, even, you're not even remembering or memorializing the fact that there was a Jewish population here. So would that be better? I mean, you know, there's like 500 swimming pools full of books about the Holocaust, but how many are about the world that was lost? How many are about what was before? How much can we focus only on the loss and the method of the loss and ignore what was lost? And that's what's great about this festival is that it looks beyond the trauma. It helps us get through it, not just into it. Zrozumienie tej kultury z roku na rok jest coraz większe, ale przeżycie takie, które, które myślę, że nas jakoś dotyczy, jest dalej rzadkie i nie ze względu na to, że my jesteśmy wyjątkowi, tylko my odtraumatyzowaliśmy tą historię. Dla nas jest bardzo głębokim przeżyciem granie tej muzyki i konfrontowanie się ze swoimi żydowskimi mm, przywarami i z konfrontowaniem w ogóle tego, kim jesteśmy dzisiaj. Cała tradycja kultury żydowskiej istnieje wszędzie tak naprawdę. Możesz na nas obserwować takie porozumienie właśnie tych, tych kultur i dla mnie jest to dowód na to, że po prostu granice w kulturze nie, kompletnie nie istnieją. A lot of the artists that you have here are not just Jews from Europe or Jews from America, they're from all over the world. And you know, some of them are Jewish, but they're, they're people who are fascinated by Jewish culture. And that's great. <laughs> It's the most beautiful, colorful, glorious architectural city that uh, one of the greatest I've ever been in. 
so there's no real comparison. How does it compare to San Francisco? Well, San Francisco is my favorite city in the world, so it's hard to have it be up there, but it's kind of the San Francisco of Eastern Europe. I was walking through the city, I saw uh, this big throng of people singing very traditional Jewish songs that I grew up singing and listening to. And it felt to me like a very much like a, a sort of we're here again. We're celebrating the fact that we have roots here. Shlomo Kabach's music, he was incredibly gifted at taking some elements of American popular culture and at the same time creating music that felt completely authentic and real in the, in the traditional Jewish Hasidic uh, songwriting nigun um, tradition. His music is amazing. I love his music. And it was a big influence on me as a, a teenager and I think for a lot of um, young, uh, young uh, Jewish kids, his music is inspiring for this reason. I think when I started the project with the Sway Machinery, I had in very intensely in mind that I wanted to work on cantorial music, that I wanted to do a project working heavily with my grandfather's music in particular, and some of the other kind of uh, my heroes from the old old time cantorial music world. And uh, that's still in there. I would say uh, I'm not dogmatic, but I'm also keen to use what, what I have received in uh, a way which is respectful of the past. So like if I completely stopped doing anything with cantorial music, it would seem that would be stupid to me and that wouldn't make sense to me. So. I'm very, very happy that we're bringing Pyra here. I think it just kind of shows the wisdom of the festival in being able to embrace a very wide concept of what uh, contemporary Jewish culture means. And uh, that's kind of in line with the way I think about it also. Bring in more from the outside to make the inner circle stronger. So we uh, we uh, curse your name, ah, and then we again. downgrade. We wanted to it. see you. That was such an amazing show last night. It was so incredible. Part of what you're seeing is, is rescued history. We've collected them over the past um, 10 years, record by record. We go to flea markets, we go to, um, we buy a lot online off eBay, but now the label is well known in America. People send them to us. Um, and for us, what's been interesting is what happens when we put all of these individual pieces that on their own have their own individual stories, but then put them together, and you have an entire kind of alternative history of Jewish life that in some cases contradicts or um, kind of colors outside of the lines of the dominant stories that we all grew up hearing. So I mean, Krakow is a, it seems like it's a, a heavy music city all the time, not just for the Jewish Culture Festival. I mean, I don't necessarily like the, the jam session uh, uh, as a concept. It's not usually my thing. I mean, I'm more of like I compose music and stuff. But but it's such a special group of uh, musicians that it's very very cool. All the fellow going around saying you 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 yeah. go out there. Right. You never know when somebody's gonna climb out of the audience with a saxophone and just start playing random. There's just this wonderful little circus of like you know like some you know, punk rock rockers and klezmer musicians and Hasidic guys all dancing together. Yeah. And it's just like, this is um, who we are, but we rarely do you see it manifest in, in this kind of way. This is very much like a dream. It's like a, this kind of fantasy, like, oh, if we never left Europe, how rich our culture would be. You know, and uh, so in some ways we're a bit hobbled because we did, we had to leave, leave here, but coming back, it's like, it feels very, very, very nice, very nice. Thank <laughs> you.
It's a totally different vibe than any other concert. Seriously, and we don't yeah. say that everywhere. This is a amazing yeah. place. We've talked about it before. It's a remarkable event yeah. and ambience and everything that comes together here. Art, history, friendship, music. Uh, what can I say? You know, yeah, I can say, Yetotel Konsp Shontam. Thank you.